So hello guys, welcome to episode three of how to build a data center. Today I'm meeting up with Callum outside by the chillers. We're gonna go and talk through what's gone on in the last month and get you up to speed. So stay tuned, roll the intro. As you can see, things have changed a fair bit out here now. Um, the header pipe that I was talking about last time is now actually here. So I'm just gonna talk you through it a little bit. Um, we have got behind me the pipes for the first chiller, the furthest one back. We've actually got the pipes here which go through to the third chiller, which isn't here yet. Second chiller's fed off this, and then we've got two pipes slightly closer to you. They are for an emergency chiller. So if we were to ever have issues with our chillers, and start dropping down towards losing the M plus one. We drop in a chiller here, plug and play, and within minutes, it's, it's back up and running to an M plus one status. You can see just up the top behind us, the pipe work that's running through the building currently, goes up round the back of all the office space, keeping clear of any critical infrastructure because obviously it's, it's full of glyco and water um, round. And then we will join you back upstairs in the warm and run you through the rest of it. So now we're up on the slightly warmer mezzanine floor. You can see behind me the pipes that I was talking about earlier, um, going around, feeding down to the data halls and then back out to the chillers. We've had a few questions on the previous video I'd like to answer now um, regarding the use of chillers over the evaporative cooling that we use at Matestone. So there's a few different reasons for, for it really. One of the main ones is we're actually in very close proximity to the M25 and specifically the Dartford Crossing. We're about a third of a mile away from the Dartford Crossing. So there were quite large concerns regarding pollution and everything. Um, evaporative cooling works best when we've got, uh, we're using large amounts of fresh air through the room. Obviously for fresh air, we therefore have to come down to an F7 filtration to have G4 pre-filter, F7 final filter. With the levels of pollution in this local area, it means that we will be going through a lot of filters, keeping the air clean, and it, it was raising quite a few concerns. Um, there's also the efficiency of water compared to the efficiency of power. So for us to do evaporative cooling, we have to use reverse osmosis water, as I'm sure you will have seen in one of our previous videos. It's actually quite a wasteful process for every one litre of uh, water that we get out of it that we can use, we, we, we lose around five litres. So as the company evolves and as efficiency looks at sort of all areas of our efficiency rather than just our PUE, um, we're, we're very conscious of ensuring we're, we're as efficient as we can be across all of it. So the third, and I'm oh, sorry if I'm going on a little bit, the third reason is um, to evaporatively cool something, we have to slow down that airflow significantly to allow the water enough time to evaporate into the airflow basically because we're using these large volumes, like the 30 meters cubed per second we spoke about previously, it just means that getting the, getting the airflow that slow would require such a massive duct. It, it's not really feasible here. So we've kind of gone with the best of two options. We still get 90% of that free air cooling uh, efficiency, thanks to the super free cool uh, chillers outside. But we then also get the benefits of that chilled cycle where we need it and we just keep it as efficient as we can. So yeah, it really, it, there's a few reasons behind it. Hopefully that explains a little bit of it. So we will now, I believe, go down and have a look at that pod with the 30 meters cubed and see how that's developing. Here we are in the contained, not so hot aisle of our um, high density data suite. And above me, you can see the duct that I've been talking about previously. It's finally starting to come to fruition. Um, really the thing to talk about on this is a, a, a kind of a concept that's being spread out and rolled out through the whole of this site will be the little adjustable points up that you can see next to me here. What we found is um, when we have co-location and different customers bring in different racks, they like to differ the height of the rack slightly depending on the manufacturer so um, and whether they've got you know 47u 48u 45u some of them so what we've got is an adjustable section which allows us to 
slide the duct down and ensure we've got a, an airtight seal right the way along differing heights of ducts, whether they're 800, um, whether 800 wide racks, whether they're 600 wide racks. So it's, it's really, it's, it's one of the small elements, but quite an important element to make it all work. So yeah, over to you, Ash. Yeah, and then I think the next thing will be getting all of the power, all of the connectivity in, but all that depends on when they get their kit delivered. So the first delivery is due start of March, and that'll be for all of the racks for this suite. Um, all the power bars, everything, and then we've just got to work and get it installed. But what I really want to show you is next door, the ATS room. The ATSs are in now, and they look absolutely stunning. So we're going to go next door, and we're going to show you actually how we're going to deliver power from ATS room into this suite. So let's go. So we're in the ATS room now, guys. Same setup as Maidstone. We've got a blue and a grey side, one for A, one for B. The ATS takes all the incoming connections from the transformers. We'll have two here, so we'll have one here, one the other side takes the incoming feed from the generators as well, and it will prioritise the mains. In the event of a power failure, it does exactly the same as Maidstone. The UPSs take over, go onto battery, start the generators, and then the generators become the mains effectively. This then supplies the data floors, and you will then see in the next video, we'll actually start getting power into the suites on the bus bars above the racks. So yeah, there's, there's not much else to, to show in here. The, UPSs are being commissioned at the moment, so we can't show you those at the moment. We've got transformers turning up imminently, big transformers. And then, yeah, it'll just be plumbing it all in. So let's go and have a look at the demo suite. So I just wanted to point out on the way to the demo suite some stuff that's actually going on. We've got all the window frames being painted, access control cabling is going in, the CCTV wires will also be going in, and we've got the lovely wiring for all the lighting systems in the corridor put in just before the drop ceiling goes in next week. So demo suite is just behind you, so I'll see you in there. So we've just walked down this corridor and we are now in the demo suite. So this is actually where we bring customers, prospects, just to kind of talk about what their requirements are. The demo suite itself actually has a physical rack in it. Not right now, but it will have a physical rack with a little spinny base so people can have a play with the rack, play with the doors, check the frame, check everything is actually what they expect and it can be heavily customised. So there's going to be a brochure of add-ons. So if they want extra brushes, extra cable hooks, etc., that's all there and they can literally pick and choose what they want to add to the rack. So these renders, uh, this is the reception render. So we've got a nice desk going in. We've got a nice funky floor. It's all lit up like a Christmas tree. Um, we're going to have a coffee machine in there as well. The car park is pretty much how it appears on this render. It's a car park, there's nothing too fancy. The only thing it doesn't have is the chillers because this render was done pre-chillers going in the car park. The gate, which I'd like to show you, but it's sadly not here yet. It was due today and we were really looking forward to filming it. It's coming tomorrow now, but I want to take you upstairs and show you all the kit that we've got that prints off all these lovely renders. And we're actually printing off the, the CAD massive kind of A0 CAD designs to make basically what's going on here a reality. So let's go on up. So guys, here we are in the office space at DA2, and this is at the moment a temporary base for us to work from. So we've got a plotter, we've got the iMac that prints off all of the big, big CAD designs and all the renders we saw in the demo suite. We're gonna slowly be renovating the office, so we're gonna be putting up partition walls for the NOC, the technical area, uh, the commercial area, sales and stuff like that. We've got a nice kitchen going in, and just over there we've, we've got another door going in um, onto the mez. We're gonna be building another meeting room and a massive boardroom. Um, so yeah, that's all going to be kicking off in the next few days. Um, we've also got some internet connectivity here, obviously, uh, not from a normal provider at the moment because we're waiting for providers to dig their ducts in and actually bring them into the building. We've got a GSM router and we've also got a second uplink from Starlink, which we're going to show you now. So let's go. So we're using Starlink here as a second network connection to the building. So we've got a 5G router with a 5G SIM in it and we're now using Starlink as a second uplink. So if one goes, we've always got the other to pick it up. Just gives us all the connectivity we need to get back to Maidstone to pull down all the CAD drawings and stuff and bring them here. So that's a wrap on episode three, guys. Thank you ever so much for joining us. As always, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends, hit the bell icon, get all the notifications going, and we'll see you in the next video.